Hello and welcome to this special program for NewsClick and The Wire. I am Paranjoy Goha Thakurta and with me here I have Justice N. Santosh Hegde. He was a former judge of the Supreme Court of India and he's a former Lok Ayukta or the People's Ombudsman of Karnataka. Thank you so much Justice Hegde for giving us your time. When you submitted your final report on the iron ore mining scandal in Bellari on the 26th of July 2011, a few days before you retired. After that, the then Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa, he had to resign his position soon thereafter on the 31st of July. And in October that year, he became perhaps the first serving Chief Minister of India who was behind bars. He was behind bars for 23 days. Yes. Now, the same Mr. Yadurappa is the Chief Ministerial Candidate of the Bharatiya Janata Party in the Assembly elections which are going to take place in May. How do you react to this fact? I feel very sad because of the fact uh, I thought there was a foolproof case against him. And uh, I didn't expect uh, what happened in the trial court in the first instance. I'm not very sure whether they have filed an appeal against that order or not. Uh, we had uh, enough proof that he had received uh, nearly 20 crores of rupees uh, from a company called Southwest Mining Company, which had absolutely no capital. It received one day 20 crores of rupees starting from the account of General Steel, Thornagal Bellari, which moved into three or four accounts in Benami names and it came and landed in the account of Southwest Mining Company. Out of that 20 crores, 10 crores of rupees by check was donate, perpetually donated to an education trust in a neighboring district called Shimoga district, which was wholly owned by Mr. Edurappa and his family. For a public servant to receive such a huge gift, uh, in accord according to me, is contrary to law, the disciplinary rules, as well as the fact that the file was then pending with Mr. Yadurappa as a chief minister. He was having the mining portfolio with him, and he received a 10 crores of rupees donation, which according to me per se shows that money was paid not as a donation, but for considerations for showing favors in the mining uh, uh, application. Of course, a mining application was not granted thereafter because the matter was being investigated by me. Now, you had, when you were the Loka Yukta, you had pointed out of how Mr. Yadurappa's two sons, Raghavendra and Vijendra, they had received a huge amount of money and in the region of about 10 crore rupees, which was donated to this educational trust run by his family. It was also found out that the same company, JSW, which is headed by Mr. Sajjan Jindal, spent 20 crores to purchase the land about which you talked about. Oh no, land I'm yet to talk about. And all. This is a different transaction altogether. Okay. Uh, there is a place called Rachinahalli near Bangalore, Whitefield where seven acres of land was acquired by the government of Karnataka some years earlier and the compensation was paid, the position was taken, the revenue records showed uh, it's the land belonging to the government, uh, but it was not utilized. Uh, Mr. Edurappa as a chief minister denotified that, uh, that seven acres of land, which according to me is contrary to the judgment of the Supreme Court as also the law. And out of that, uh, that, uh, that, that seven acres was purchased by a minister in his cabinet called Mr. Krishna Shetty. Krishna Shetty perpetually sold one acre of land by a registered sale deed for a consideration of nearly 40 lakhs or so to Edurappa's son-in-law and two sons. That very land which they purchased for uh, maybe about 40, crores, uh, 40 lakhs of rupees was after, immediately thereafter was purchased by Southwest Mining Company for a consideration of another 10 crores of rupees. I mean, value cannot just go up like that. Obviously, this is a transaction, in my opinion, uh, which of course is uh, not accepted by the court, is a consideration for something else other than the real market value, but it was uh, a consideration for um, Mr. Edirappa to pass a favorable order in the mining uh, application that is pending before him. Just a day, you know, 
what were the circumstances under which the former Chief Minister, Mr. Yehudapa, was acquitted in October 2016? The CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation, took its own time appealing. It, it took eight months. Finally, you know, what we found is that the, the, the judge who had acquitted him, even the Anti-Corruption Bureau of the Karnataka government even recommended that an investigation be launched against him way back in September 2017. But, but, but you see, how was what you describe as a foolproof case of corruption against Mr. Yadurappa and his sons, how did the entire matter play out in different courts of law and he was given virtually a clean chit? Well, uh, it's rather difficult to comment uh, on the judgment of a court uh, by making an acquisition of corruption or something. But I can only say that I can't accept this judgment because the monies received by Mr. Yadurappa were by way of a check so there is no dispute that he received that money. The factum, there's also there's no dispute that uh, there was an application pending for a grant of mining license before uh, the chief minister was also the minister for mining, which in my opinion by itself proves that the money is not gone as a consideration for the purchase of a uh, one acre of land or for donation to uh, his family education trust. Obviously, it is clear to my mind at least that this was a illegal gratification given by the uh, Southwest Mining Company to get a mining license. So I look at it from that point of view. I have not read the judgment of the uh, trial court, but I, I, I just can't reconcile myself to the fact that uh, uh, these two transactions have been had the acceptance of uh, judicial acceptance. You know, just a second, how do I, I go back to the same question I asked you earlier? Today, the Bharti Janta Party, under Mr. Narendra Modi, is in power in Delhi. And the BJP, I mean, look, you, we all know you were the son of Justice K.S. Hegde. He is a former Supreme Court judge like you. He had been superseded in 1993 by, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, 73 by Justice A.N. Ray in, after the Keshavananda Bharata case, uh, the Bharati case, the very well-known case about uh, how much the, the, the constitution, we can, uh, the, how much parliament can, uh, that, that the parliament couldn't change the basic structure of the constitution. Okay, your father was uh, a speaker of the Lok Sabha. He was one of the founding members of the BJP. And I'll, I'll, I'll recall another incident to you. On the 23rd of June, 2010, you were so unhappy when the Karnataka government transferred an officer of the forest department, or rather didn't transfer, suspended him. He was Deputy Conservator of Forest, Mr. Gokul, R. Gokul, that you resigned. And finally, it had the, you, the, the, the top leadership of the BJP, including Mr. Edwe, L.K. Advani, he persuaded you to take back your resignation. So how do you see that this same party just has completely forgotten all the evidence that you put out in these voluminous reports, I, I, you are carrying them with you. I, I dare say I, I can show this here. That where where you were, you said you have enough evidence to show, and you have just outlined in graphic detail how this person received illegal gratifications. Well, I can't repeat that sentence again because of the fact the matter is sub judice. But I would like to tell you one thing and all. Yes. One of my officers who was working with me in the Lokayakta as a dep on deputation called Mr. Gokul was suspended because he didn't obey the instructions of a minister to come and see him at a place where, which was uh, uh, owned or possessed by a person against whom the Karnataka Lokayakta had filed a charge sheet against that uh, company. So he said, I'm not coming to that building, call me anywhere else. You know. But the minister didn't like it, so consequently he was suspended. So when I asked the Chief Secretary how you can keep him under suspension when he's uh, under, working under me without consulting me, he said the orders have been passed, I can't do anything about that. So I thought if I can't protect an officer who was working under my instructions uh, being suspended, it's not worthwhile staying in the office and I resigned. Well, many people came and asked me to take back my resignation, but I didn't agree to that. And all. Then one day Mr. L.K. Advani, whom I consider as equivalent to my father, uh, with whom I uh, had uh, uh, spent a lot of time when he was in jail. I was appearing for the detainees at that point of time. During, during emer the emergency? Emergency. I was a lawyer for Mr. Uh, Vajpayee Ji, then Mr. Advani Ji, 
and uh, and, um, and SN Mishra and Madhu Dandavati. And I was also a lawyer. You were all four yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I was also a lawyer for Mr. Ramakrishna Hegde, who was in jail, Mr. Devi Gowda, and everything. I got an opportunity to uh, fight their case. In that background, I had uh, come to know Mr. Advani pretty well. And Advani was one person who was uh, closely connected to my family. When my father died, he came to our village uh, you know, to uh, participate in the grief in which we were at that point of time. So I have a very high regard for Mr. L.K. Advani. So Mr. Advani one day telephoned to me and said, Sandosh, you're doing a good job. Uh, don't resign. I said, sir, how can I continue to be in office when my of I can't protect my own officers? I'm not there not only to make um, uh, this thing for myself. He said, what is it that you want? I said, I want, I want the suspension to be uh, re revoked and I will take back my resignation. And that was done. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gadkari was the president of All India BJP at that point of time. He and Mr. Edurappa came to my uh, residence and uh, gave me the letter of withdrawal of resignation and I am rather the suspension and I withdrew my resignation for that purpose. Uh, I couldn't have continued if that uh, suspension order was uh, not revoked. Okay. You know, I, I want you to again take you back to what happened after that. The Anti-Corruption Bureau in the Karnataka government they launched an investigation against the CBI judge, R.B. Dharma Gaudar, in September 2017. He was the same person who had acquitted Mr. Yeliurappa. Now, what you found is that something very, very unusual has been happening. The advocate, Mr. H.M. Siddharth, who had represented Mr. Yeliurappa and his family members and his sons, he was actually caught by the staff of the Vidhan Sabha, Vidhan Sodam, with two crore rupees in cash in October 2016. In then well, earlier, we also found that, you know, there have been a number of attempts made to bribe judges. And, and in fact, uh, after Gali Janardhan Reddy was jailed and he was in Chanchal Goda jail uh, in Hyderabad in July 2012, uh, the lower court judge, uh, Mr. T. Lakshmi Narasimha Rao, he was arrested and he was jailed because, and in his confessional statement, he said that a relative and associates of Gali Janathan Reddy had offered him 100 crore rupees to secure bail. Now, now what does this tell us about the way our, our criminal justice system works? It's very unfortunate uh, that the confidence the people repose in the judiciary uh, right now I, I think uh, it's really, really a sad state of affairs that we do come here, uh, hear about uh, corruption in judiciary, which is an admitted fact. Nobody can uh, uh, deny that and all. Uh, these instances which you mentioned have appeared in the newspaper. I have uh, read them also, which gives a room to think that uh, uh, the judgments delivered in those circumstances uh, may not be uh, correct judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we've seen that after your report came out, there were three former chief ministers whose record you were very, very critical of. And it's not just Mr. Yadurappa, you were critical of the late Mr. Dharam Singh, uh, the former chief minister, Mr. H.D. Kumaraswamy. All of them you found were in some way or the other involved in these illegal activities and in, in this illegal manner in which Iron Ore was mining. So in that sense, your report was not partisan. You were, in a sense, indicting the entire political class. I wouldn't say that I was indicting the political class, but the, I had an opportunity of inquiring into the actions of these three chief ministers, and I've given voluminous evidence to show why I have implicated them in this matter. Uh, well, the acquittal of uh, Mr. Edirappa uh, it gives me a lot bit of uh, sadness and I didn't, don't even know whether the state government of Karnataka has filed a preferred an appeal or not in the matter or maybe the investigating agencies have filed or not and all. But one thing is certain that uh, today money plays a very big role in all the actions and inactions on the part of the government, I think. I want to draw your attention to the report that you presented, where you talked about the illegal export of iron ore from Bellicari port by Adani Enterprises. And you said that there were incriminating documents which suggest that they had 
made illegal payments to the director of the port, to customs officials, to police personnel. But eventually, it didn't stand up in a court of law. The Supreme Court, the special investigative team of the Karnataka Lokayukta said no case had been made out. And, and the CBI and the Lokayukta eventually filed closure reports against Adani Enterprises. Why do I bring out this case? Because the head of the Adani group, Mr. Gautam Adani, is perceived to be very close to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Well, let me give you the background of these cases. I have not studied the B report filed in the case of Adani's and all, but I have studied the case pertaining to one Dodanavar, another company, which is similar to the uh, what has been alleged against Adani's. In, uh, on February 19th and 20th of 2010, uh, Lokayakta officers raided a company called Dodanavar company and all. And they seized certain documents from the computer and the hard copies also were there and all from which it was found that they have exported huge quantities of iron ore uh, without permission of excavation, storage, transportation and exportation. Without any one of these documents, they had exported a huge quantity of iron ore. Then uh, when uh, we investigated, we gave a copy of the investigation uh, to the director of mines saying that, uh, look, this is what has happened in the case and all, please look into it and all. Then from records, now I find out, the director of mines at that point of time issues them a notice saying that you have exported so much iron ore without paying the royalty. Therefore, they have caused loss to the state and all. This was sometime in the month of Ma uh, 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 March uh, 2010. In the month of June 2010, the, the Dunnavaran company goes and pays the, all the money purportedly due as a royalty to the government of Karnataka. Now, royalty is only 27 rupees per metric ton. Whereas, at the point of time, they were exporting this iron ore one metric ton for 6,500 to 7,000 rupees. Now, it was easy for them to pay 27 rupees and be done with it. But our charges were not that they cheated the government of the money after it. Our charges were of stolen property. They have um, purchased or excavated illegally mined iron ore. They have stored it, which is controlled by the Mining Act and rules. They have transported it contrary to the Mining Act and rules and have exported it also. So these are all separate offenses. But the investigating agency goes and when we file the charge sheet, FIR, investigating agency goes and gives a B report saying that now that they have paid the money to the government. What is a B report? B report is no claims made out. Yeah. And then you think the Adani Enterprises case is somewhat similar? Yes, that was I was told, and I have not read it, but I was told it's a similar thing. And all they paid the uh, royalty that is due to the government, and the B report is filed, and the court accepted the B report. What happened to the illegal action of extraction, storage, transportation, and exportation? No, no, no. Suppose hypothetically. There is a BJP government that comes to power in Karnataka, and we'll know on the 15th of May. Suppose, hypothetically, Mr. Yadurappa becomes the next chief minister of Karnataka. What would this mean for the investigations, the judicial processes that would follow? I don't know, since they have filed a B report, it is for the investigating agencies to challenge. Investigating agency itself has filed a B report, so they can't challenge it now and all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it is left to others who, are, who have some public interest involved in it and all to challenge that order by saying, you know, this is you know, incorrect because uh, uh, mere compensating the royalty part of it doesn't exculpate them from the other charges of illegal mining. They have, all these are very serious charges under the Mines and Minerals Development Act, you know. Therefore, they ought to have been considered the different action under the diff different provisions of law. But merely saying you have been compensated, it's like a thief when caught says, I will pay for the value of the uh, stolen goods. Can you get out of the uh, theft charge? Okay. Tell me, do you believe the CBI is under tremendous political pressure? I wouldn't want to say that, you know, because it has been named as, uh, when the Congress was in power, it was called the Congress Investigating Bureau and all. I suppose it keeps It changing. was also described by a, a judge of the Supreme Court as a caged parrot. Yeah, caged parrot. And, and then we have two former directors of the CBI being investigated by the very same agency they headed. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is not only CBI, it is there in every... Okay. okay. Now, you've talked about the nexus between the mining lobby, business persons and politicians. But this has also been facilitated by corrupt bureaucrats. Now, in your report, you had recommended action against uh, over 700, uh, 787 officers of the Karnataka government. And recently, very relative, relatively recently, on the 17th of May 2017, uh, 
serving officer of the Indian Administrative Service, I should name him, Mr. Gangaram Bhaderia, he was arrested. I mean, was this a rather rare or rather egregious example of, of a corrupt bureaucrat? Because he was also, the accusations against him are also yeah, pertaining yeah, to this, he, I, he I don't know. Secretary of Mining. And all. Yes, I agree with you. There's a, not, nothing has been done in, in, um, uh, based on my report. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, the present political party which is in power in Karnataka, they walked all the way from Balari to Bangalore as a protest for not implementing my report. Now they have been in charge for four years. What have they done? It's, it only shows that uh, when it comes to brass tacks, all political parties are the same. How do you react to the social activist uh, Ravi Krishna Reddy? In March 2017, he wrote to the top five judges of the Supreme Court of India, alleging that the then Chief Justice of Karnataka, Justice Subro Kamal Mukherjee, had favoured Gali Janathan Reddy. Would you like to say anything about his allegation? Well, there were many allegations against that person. Uh, this is one of them only, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he's been given a, a membership of some tribunal now, which I read in the papers and all, but there were very serious allegations against that particular judge was there. And Ravi Krishna Reddy, I think, did the right thing to bring it to the notice of the Superior Court. Uh, probably, otherwise, he might have gone to the Supreme Court or something. I wouldn't... Anyway, he didn't go to the Supreme Court, ultimately. In today's paper, I read he's been uh, uh, given a membership of some tribunal. Tell me, after spending about three years behind bars, the person who's often considered to be the kingpin, the linchpin of the scandal, Gali Janathan Reddy, former minister in Mr. Yadurappa's government, when his daughter Brahmani gets married in Bangalore, the amount of money that is spent is unprecedented. I mean, all kinds of reports we hear. Yes. I mean, I mean, the brigade ground in Karnataka was converted into some sort of all the all the monuments of Karnataka were rebuilt over there. And and mind you, this was just around the time demonetization yes. had yes. happened in November of 2016. Now, five days later, the income tax department raids him. In between, what happens? One driver called K C Ramesh, he is supposed to be working for uh, a government officer of the Karnataka government. He commits suicide and in his suicide note, he writes that he was being forced to convert 100 crores of black money into white. I mean, what do you say about the sheer conspicuous manner in which this person, after spending three years in jail, he splurges on his daughter's wedding. Even the invitation card that he sent reportedly cost a huge amount of money. And, and what happened subsequently? Well, that itself indicates the fact that nothing has been done pursuant to my mining report. If they were to be raided properly and the properties were to be seized and the accounts were to be uh, seized too, such amount of money would not have been available to them. That apart, that also indicates the failure of demonetization. Because a person can come from jail within a few days if you could get nearly 100, 150 crores or rupees uh, in uh, present-day currency uh, to spend on the daughter's wedding itself is a fact that a certain class of people in this country can get over law very easily. My last question, uh, no, not my last question. I have one other question, a penultimate question. How important are institutions and how important are the individuals who head these institutions? Under you, the people's ombudsman, the institution of the Lok Ayukta in Karnataka was very, very active, very, very, uh, I should say, aggressively active in taking, uh, unearthing this, uh, I don't know, mining scandal. You were succeeded by a former Chief Justice of Karnataka, Justice Bhaskar Rao. Now, he was a person whose son was accused of blackmail and extortion. And in a sense, the whole institution of the Loka Yukta got uh, degraded uh, before the eyes of the people. What do you have to say about the institution and the people who head these institutions? The Karnataka Loka Yukta institution was one of the first ombudsman institution created uh, anywhere in India, maybe next only to Madhya Pradesh. And all. Uh, it was uh, expected to be a very strong ombudsman's body. So two powers were given to the institution. One is the 
our grievance redressal that is giving relief to people who suffer because of administration or maladministration or no administration. The other one is to fight corruption through the Lokrayakta police, the big unit of uh, police uh, with, the, uh, with the Lokrayakta. And these are the only two uh, this thing, um, uh, paths the Lokrayakta had. For very many reasons, though institution came to existence in 1986 till about 2001, uh, nobody did anything in that institute. They just came as a, uh, retired judges, enjoyed the place and went away. It is Justice N. Venkatachala who came in 2001, who really created a ripple in the uh, society by raiding very many people with the thing and showed that what Loka Ekta was. I succeeded him in 2006 and I also found the institution had a very strong pass. It could sue a motto, that is by itself, without any complaint, start investigation even against the chief minister and other higher authorities. It did not take anybody's permission on that and all. Such was the institution uh, which was liked by very many people in Karnataka because we did a uh, hell of a lot of work uh, uh, by catching the um, uh, corrupt people or even uh, granting relief to people who could not uh, find relief from the government to the thing and all. Unfortunately, it became uh, very unpopular with the people in power. So the first thing uh, that happened was in, uh, soon after I retired, two other people came but then left in between and all. Then came Mr. Bhaskar Rao. Uh, Bhaskar Rao was uh, suspected to be a corrupt judge because the, when his name appeared in the newspaper, the Bar Association of Karnataka passed a resolution saying that you are corrupt, he's corrupt, don't bring him. But still they brought them in. And what did he do? He brought a person, that is son, who was accused of uh, cheating in uh, Hyderabad, uh, got him bail and brought him to Karnataka, made him stay in his own house, gave him a room in the Karnataka Lokayakta, and he allowed him to uh, sort of blackmail officers who were suspected to be corrupt. And I'm told he used to call the uh, people over the phone and say, if you don't give me so much money, I'll see that the Lokayakta raided then. And many of them are supposed to have paid, which is the interim report that uh, a police extortion. officer... Uh, yeah, it's extortion. It is not a, a simple case of uh, um, um, uh, receiving bribe or something. It's simple. It's a decorty, according to me, if I can go that extent. And all. So this is how the people in power uh, were trying to um, uh, destroy the institution of Lokayakta. Then in 2016 or uh, 14, uh, they tried to take away one of the powers, grievance redressal power, uh, which fortunately came to the public domain and people started protesting against it, so they dropped that <coughs> idea. Then came 2016 without discussion, either in the assembly or within the political system, uh, they created an ACB and transferred the power of Lokayakta uh, fighting corruption powers to ACB. Anti-corruption. Anti-corruption yeah. powers. Yeah. Uh, what does it indicate? It definitely indicates the people who are in power, whether it's A party or B party, they do not want Lokayakta because Lokayakta is an institution which fights against them and their misdeeds. So they, every effort was made to denude the powers of the Lokayakta. And also, I think in a way, by bringing Bhaskar Rao, they wanted to make it, uh, uh, you know, uh, people would not uh, repose confidence in that institution. This was an effort by people in power. Uh, and today, you all would have said, that, you know, the Lokayakta was attacked by a person who was a complainant in the case, and you were stabbed uh, very many times. And we also find that, uh, the Lokayakta institution had sent seven letters in three years saying that the security in the Lokayakta office is very, very missing. Uh, then metal detector is not working, such like complaints. But the government didn't even bother to uh, look into that reply, reply also. And at 1.30, the, 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 the stabbing incident takes place. And at 4 o'clock, they bring a new uh, metal detector and put it there. So, so in other words, you're saying that the Karnataka government has systematically, yes. uh, what should I say, uh, weakened this institution. Not only the present political party in power, but the previous BJP party also did the same thing by appointing um, uh, uh, this person, uh, Vaskar Rao as a local actor. Okay. My last question to you. You have participated in the movement against corruption, which was led by Anna Hazare, the India Against Corruption. Uh, you still have are on good terms with him. Do you believe civil society, ordinary citizens, and People like you and, and people like Anna Hazare still can do something to even make a dent, even a small dent, against this kind of widespread corruption in public life in India. I was confident when Anna movement was at its peak. I have traveled all over India. I've seen the response of the people, how much respect they had to Anna Ji. 
and they used to listen to the speeches of uh, Anaji and others who were there and all, which gave us a lot bit of hope that maybe the society will change. It was mostly the middle class people who used to participate in these proceedings and all. But I think we did make a small mistake, not a small mistake, it became a big mistake in the end. We started speaking about it only in the cities, metropolitan cities, and it didn't go to the district level or taluk level and all. The rural uh, areas. Rural areas. Uh, and this type of participation has a fatigue factor. Middle class people can't come uh, every time when there is a protest in the thing. And all. So they have their own personal difficulties, they have their work and everything. So in that process, we, I think we lost some of the supporters in the thing. And the biggest damage was the creation of uh, a political party, uh, which uh, uh, which I think yeah, uh, very uh, I'm very unhappy with the fact because uh, I think many things Anaji uh, expected to happen didn't happen and this is one thing I don't think he ever expected that to happen. Well, thank you so much Justice Santosh Ekde for coming here and giving us your time and expressing yourself so candidly and so freely. Thank you once again. You've just heard and watched Justice N. Santosh Ekde, former Lokayukta of Karnataka, former judge of the Supreme Court expressing his sadness, his anguish at the fact that the Bharti Janata Party has nominated Mr. B.S. Yedurappa as its chief ministerial candidate, a person against whom and his family members, Justice Hegde was responsible for publishing a voluminous report indicting him or seeking to indict him for corrupt practices. Thank you for being with us.